7.1 we're still LPL so why not pick the rise uh, the Maokai in the top lane especially when you have a composition involving Orianna so that will be everything locked in there so Flandria in the top lane playing you know offense unless he really gets going like uh, Kabe was able to do uh, so if LGD fall behind it really kind of turns into this uh Instantly flash after. Hits him with one Queen's Wrath, but done. it's the follow after. But oh. ZZR's there to save him. Flandre turns around. He's got the stun down. And lots of damage in from ZZR. May even pick up a kill onto Amy as he comes in with a Venomous Bite. It's going to be a kill in return. Both junglers fall down. Funny caught out. Will it be the stun? Not quite. No cooldown on the electric. Got to be pushing him underneath that tower, even taking all that damage from the minions. He is going deep. Star Search lands, and the minions are running out. He jumps out there, picks up the kill, walks away. Got to be the one v one kill under tower. And that is what we call ever. Flandre pops his ultimate, gets two stuns down. He's on the run. Sapling is following him after, and that's the real MVP as he hits him with the arcane smash and punches him in the face. And Flandre should be falling over. Hits the Basker. Oh no, slaps him on the way over. Got him. That was unfortunate. He had the flash. He held onto it a little bit too long. I think he could have pulled the trigger early. That's it. Jenning. Six health there. Meanwhile, top lane. The tank is on his way. He arrives in top lane. Funny knows he's under attack, so he instantly tries to get his passive off. But he is. There's no way Malkai is gonna get away from that assault, and that is another kill to Snake. It was a small window, but then Tank came in and just kicked the window open. Yep. And this will surely be the first tower, but now it's kind of a race. LGD, they don't have the creep wave set up in time, which means that Snake pulled the trigger. They get the first oh, tower first. Oh, PYR, Imp, you're going to have to block that. He gets it, and one more. Okay, he gets the crit on top of him. Oh, deadly flourish. <laughs> that was, that was oh, almost no! scary. That's your grenade. Bounces onto Imp as well for the enhanced damage. He's got the crit. He's running after him. He does have boot three. Imp, can he get away in time? This is such a scary OQ running after him. Minions getting in the way. He's closing the distance. He's diving. This is to hero and he falls over. It will just kill him by running away. I'm telling you, it's the secret. Here Unreal. comes Godby, straight line. I think he's gonna do, but instead he just doesn't do anything. And Mo's dragged into this one. Funny jumps out top of them with a twisted advance. So much damage. Tanks on his way. He's gonna jump after Godby. Finds him with the W. And Funny now on the retreat. Has to land the arcane smash. Does what he can, but ultimately he's gonna hit the death chamber for a one-on-two trade for Snake. And suddenly a ruling soul is about to be a big deal. Only sitting on the catalyst right. He'll push in this middle tower. This is the rotation that you can see from them. Jin goes up to the mid lane, comes in with the Stark, uh, the ultimate. Flyger comes in with the slicing Maelstrom, obliterates both Amy and Godby. Ultimate over the wall, in for the misfortune, blocked out. Ace in the hole there from ZZR. And the two kills should be out. Funny was, uh, they're not having a good time. Critical opened up, and no one goes down. So OQ back into the mid lane. We'll clear out this mini wave. And Funny may even just pick up the kill. It gets the movement speed after Funny. Finishes him off in the 1v1, and Funny just disrespected him. And let's take a look at that mini map. There is a tower in between uh, Flandre and Safety right now. So. That's all he really needed in the end. Lightning Rush is really good in his ability. Snake will use this opportunity to try and go into the Baron, but. Oh, Amy's Misfortune in pit. coming out. Amy comes over the wall, but it's already in Salt to finish off the Baron. Amy caught in the pit, but he used the Ultimate on top of himself. He'll get the kill. Goffy coming out there. It's a one for two trade so far. Snake come out, and that's another two for two. And just a dance back and forth. PYL caught within the ring of stars. Imp over the wall. TP coming in from Funny, but it's a little bit too late despite the home guard. Jin is already on his way out, and it's just that blue of secured for God V. But the damage has been done. Snake managed to retain Baron on at least three members for them. Uh, unfortunately, it's not on their top winner, so they can't use it in a split push scenario when the 1 3 1 has been working out so well for them. Uh, but good cleanup Wait. from LGD. That was. What? Oh, PYL is dead. Okay. It was the. In. They are one member down, of course, but Amy rotates into the mid lane. Voice of Light comes out. Godby caught out, and PYL launches the ultimate, but he's caught within the star circle of Tank. He'll find the next one. Boop to death. Three and zero. Mid tower opened up, and that's exactly what Snake were looking for. I do want to say that that was led by Mo. Yeah, it wasn't. Uh, it was Tank that came in and did the majority of the damage, but Mo flashing over the wall and laying down that Zyra ultimate. We said at the beginning of the the TP, LGD are actually starting off the Baron. There's one way to deal with the issue. Godby is the one zoning away. The TP coming in from Flandre. It's very late though. Curtain call will start chipping away at the tanks. Voice of Light throwing at Amy. He's gonna have to take a step back as Funny is the one to attack the Baron. He's gonna go over to the wreck side. Snake, what do they decide to do? They still have the ultimate available from Flandre. Amy's low. ZZR thinking about the flank from the side, but they do have the inside track. We'll look towards the mid lane. And ultimately, LGD get away with it. And Snake have just been late this entire game. They got the first Baron off of a 50 50. 
50, which frankly they probably shouldn't have because it was set up poorly, but slow to the punch this time around punishes them even harder, and LG walk away with a free Baron. Time after time, and that's really the, the crux of this story for us that you highlighted, is that Snake have just been late once again, they need to start setting alarms to their meetings because LGD every single time has been at that objective before them. I mean, there was a problem in miscommunication, and the Baron that could have finished off the game for them, that they were in position to finish off, has completely just been thrown away into the gutter. However, Tank, let's go. Throwing this down the mid lane. I mean, it's moving very slowly, and honestly, LGD can probably just <laughs> walk to the side. But this is an engage from a funny onto Mo. Oh, blown up immediately! LGD are turning this game on his head. And it stalled out long enough. Now that they have the Baron, LGD are in full control. The gold lead doesn't show this, but their champions are online. Flandre is just trying to race and get someone to respond to him, but it's the Rek'Sai who has the ultimate. She can deal with this, force him to back, and then rejoin her team if she wants. I mean, Tower's dead. This is going down so quickly. You all this out from Imp and Godby and PYL with this mini wave on top of it. They're gonna look to take away Nexus Direct right here. Voice of Light lands onto Imp. Celestial expansion damage onto Funny. He'll jump onto a target, take him out into the Guardian Angel from both of these players. But there's a trap there to potentially finish off his enemy. Deadly Frost doesn't quite land, but it's a kill. Godby aims it onto the Elise tank. Returning the damage onto Funny should surely be the kill. But look at the healing out from his passive. Tank bites the dust. And OQ, the only one remaining. Imp will cleanse off all that damage. And Mo will come in, try and make this defense happen. But he brings up the plants. Amy coming in from top lane. Flandre, he's the hero play. Is this what they need? He comes in, but this is an on-hit build, remember? He doesn't have that instant damage. OQ turned around, heads the dancing grenade, but he's just blown up. And after all of that, going in one by one, LGD from one play, take this, turn it around take out the Nexus, and take game one. And Snake, late the entire game, lose control. That was their game to lose. I mean, that's just depressing, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> like, that game was... Winning lanes, either through shove priority or trade priority on the side of LGD, uh, and then they have it set up perfectly with, like, a Rek'Sai who's there to just kind of gank. The six, the six seconds of deflating. This is what I want to see, and this is what I expected from Tank. So it is Courage of the Colossus Rise. Um, against the Syndra, makes sense. Will really help deal Not with die. a lot of that burst damage in survival. Right, but remember... We're going to have to cheese it, Flandre. Will he use his ghost? I mean, he's locked up to follow after from... Oh, the flash is well from funny. I mean, that's just a secure kill. Ah, silly things, like overextending when you don't have eyes on the enemy jungle. Meanwhile, we'll spawn. This kind of leaves I mean, Amy this out. Syndra coming down. The leap is already being used. If he gets caught by Scatter the Weak, he's pretty much done for. Unleash power lands to follow up the force of Will the Q. Godby finds the kill on the jungle. Eto FM way too deep. And that is not the foot that you want to lose. But Amy putting pressure onto this bottom lane. Mo and Mint have found him, and the team's coming out. So this could be a, a good play. But what a Scatter the Weak in from Godby. The Blast Plant will allow them to catch up. Flandre gets the fling. Instant kill onto Amy. But that will not convert into anything else. Maybe they get this dragon, though. And reminder that Funny had teleports. That's a follow-up snare as well from Mint, along with the ultimate. Amy's going to be blocking these one away. That's where Fun following after. Flandre is now TPing into the top lane, so so has Funny. Amy, but maybe the first one to die, flung into the Mega Adhesive. He'll go down, but Godby in from the mid lane. He has all of these ult ready to go. On these power, onto Mo. No way he's going to survive that. Hextech ultimatum onto SFM for another kill. Two for two trade so far. It's funny. Looks for the, uh, the, the hook shot, but Flandre flings him out of it as Godby now walking towards this mid lane. Has to flash over the wall. Flandre was looking for him for the second fling. And the difference between those two team fights and why I'm going to say that Snake came out ahead is the target priority and selection there. Um, the fact is, is that Syndra got there oh, late to the fight. Oh, flash out from Tank follow the full combo. Funny was there to block it out, but it's still the kill from Mint. Great play from Tank. And then just exasperated by that, uh, Godby got there late to the fight. And who does he blow up? Although, hold on. I mean, it's a command 1v2 on the tower, so this is still scary. He's going to jump onto SOFM. Hextech calls amazing. One more to attack. Gets the 1v2 kill onto the tower. Vladre's following after, but he has to run after Funny. He's sticking down from... Oh! oh yeah, he's going to get flunk. Yeah, he's dead. <laughs> flung him out of the hook shot. Oh, that probably shouldn't have connected. He's so far away. In the end, LGD do get the top lane tower. And the tidal wave doesn't find Mo, but Godfi is coming in from the mid lane. He gets the slowdown. That's a, that's a dead karma. It finds the kill, and he will continue pushing onto this next tower. And we're still going. He's trying to clear out the creep wave, but it's being blocked. Yeah, and Godfi was approaching him to a point where Mint did not want to be here anymore. He takes the top tower, and Flandre's run out of minions. Tank's pushing rotating toward this middle lane. And this is definitely a game where one piece oh, no. of CC lands and something goes wrong. Mo almost killed and instantly, and Imp just assassinates the support on these two items. SOFM chased down, almost Price taken seeker. out with that second tier of 
Ace in the hall, and yeah, Pricey was throwing and weaving in the auto attacks. Uh oh. Moe's only just come back. Come on, man. Unleash power picks up the kill. Got V locked underneath the tower. Tang going to take it out as well. Look at him. He's just going ham underneath the tower. And he goes on to Flandre as well. He's blocked off by the traps. He has to walk all the way around. Now he's maybe caught out of position. He jumps in. SWFM having to pick up that kill. But funny, the double wobble from Nami jumps onto mid, finds that kill. Flandre being chased down as well. And this is disastrous from SWFM and all of Snake. Flandre, the last member remaining. But funny's going to find him. Precision protocol for the kill. And the ace for LGD. Imp is the king. That's all I have to say. Yes, he finally went down. But you have to think, what is the community? But LGD just came in swinging. Uh, Imp, however, may be under attack. Flandre wants him, but he's knocked up. Great Tidal Wave in from PYL. They're still going to find the target of Imp, but in the back lines, Funny has gotten Mint himself. It's a one for one trade ultimately, but there is still Unleashed Power available from God V. So, got to be careful of that. Four Unleashed Power onto uh, Flandre. But he's still tanky to a point where Tank is still following after onto Amy oh, God no, V. Missed oh, it. he's got the W down. He's got the Rune Prison. And that was reset time for S2FM. So all the praise that we gave LGD, that was the perfect fight for Snake. And we talk about throws. They instantly throw in the mid game. There is the theory that they could turn on Baron. Yes, Flandre's low health. Where are they going? Towards it is the Baron. Baron. <laughs> they took some minions with them as well, but they're onto this Baron. Got to have no help from that one. It's only PYL left alive with Imp respawning. So this is a Baron over to Snake. LPL giveth, LPL taketh. I feel like I just watched this in game one, but the shoe is on the other foot. Excellent pickup and assassination there, particularly from Flandre to get a great flank on Imp. Yeah, I hope we get a replay of that because I think it may be Imp. Um, I think they died just as they approached the tower. There That's you go. unfortunate. But these, uh, these minions are able to keep it in place. I mean, Funny just runs into the enemy team and suicides, essentially. His team wasn't there, and I mean, he's not... A He's not a person who can CC everybody, so I'm, I'm not sure what that was about, but that's just allowed Snake to break open this middle tower. And it makes it that much easier for them to dive. The Camille ultimate is so potent in trying to stop that and guard against it. Uh, yeah, we still have disengage from Nami and Syndra, but if those skill shots don't connect... That's true, and many of the strengths that we've seen from the Camille's ultimate against the Sins uh, specifically is waiting for initial engage to happen, then blocking him from getting to your allies. But in that case, he just kind of ran in there and died. Flandre's going to run towards all these juicy low health targets, all these squishy members of the team, and he's running after someone. It's going to be Imp. He has to flash away. So he comes out there, and it's going to be Godbeat chucked into the team. He's on the Mega Adhesive, and all the team's coming down, but it is a kill onto Mo. All the damage out from Imp. He's able to get another kill onto Flandre. He's so close. One auto attack will do it. He's being slowed down. Tank's there. He'll jump away of the E. Min turns around and blasts down Rek'Sai. Tank does not want to re-engage, but funny. He's in back from base, and now it's cleanup time. Tactical sweep. Didn't get him with the extra damage coming there from the Titanic Hydra, but everyone is evacuated somewhere. There's a hook shot. Knocked him back with his dying breath. Flandre maybe saves Mint. Oh, Flandre jumps into Amy, but he's immediately stopped in his tracks. Great CC chain, allowing him to put out the damage that he needs to, but the Curtain Call is keeping the tanks at bay. Amy's very low. PYL is going to have to lock this one up, but he's trapped in place. Flandre knocks him into the team, flings him in, but funny now jumping onto mid. The nice instant exhaust will keep him alive, but the Hextech ultimatum is enough damage, allowing him to go into the back lines by himself, running down the Karzix. Flandre caught out. Tank is separated from his team, but LGD, they are corralled into this small gap. They need to try and make their way out somehow. S2FM, he's looking at these juicy resets right now. Lands the W. Funny. Follows on to Flandre in this 1v2. He still oh, has no. the Guardian Angel. He's flipped over. Flandre running away. Tank chased after. He's got the rest of his team behind him. LGD, Imp is leading the charge into the rest of the team. Great. Glass comb. But the bubble will secure the kill onto Flandre. Tank stuck in here as well. And it's a sudden brawl within the Dragon Pit. Mo was unable to save his allies. And LGD come out big. Imp ran into melee range of three members of Snake's backline. He literally just gave them the Imp hand. Oh. Mo still sticking around. He's caught by the tactical sweep, forced into this bush. There's no way he can go, and Funny will finish off this kill, just not landing in the flame. And that's a kill right there for Funny, sweeping up the rest of the team for basically an unofficial ace right there for LGD. Baron is up, but SOFM is live, so there is a potential for a steal here. And that said, LGD also need to reset the map and reset their health bars before they approach this. But here comes the teleport. Now, uh, Impus starts the RP. He's still doing a lot of damage. Funny so in here. He's got the Hextech ultimatum. Level 16 to level 14 on Rek'Sai. Has the stronger smite. Yeah, they just need to ward over the wall because Funny can stop him by himself. That's exactly what he's going to do. Hextech ultimatum. Locks him in the arena. Tidal wave. The kill. And 
the current core, not enough. It's going to be the Baron over to LGD, perfectly executed with the tools that he had. Min running away, great flash from him. And Keeps suddenly, himself alive. Funny must have been listening to us because he's like, it's okay, I'll, I'll clean up my game. Andre. Yeah, that was not a place he wants <laughs> for the necessary step into because you'll get punished hard by Funny who jumps in. He doesn't have the Guardian Angel anymore. He has to be careful of this one. Amy. Leading the charge onto this inhibitor. SOFM in the back lines, but no one's isolated. There's no targets for him to kill right now. Inhibitor is down. Ace in the hole just sends him away. This is essentially a three versus five for the next couple seconds until SOFM joins the fight. Amy blocking up these bullets coming and raining down from mid. Amy needs to be careful, and he just kind of walked for us. That's a time that you do not want to be on the front lines. And he's going to find the opportunity to jump onto tight, but I don't think this is a good fight anymore for LGD because Min is completely untouched. SOFM jumping after, follows in with the leap, gets the reset, jumps into PYL, finishes him off, and God be also closed in from around from a wonderful ultimate from Tang. And all in all, a one for five trade for Snake. Did they just lose the game? They have to deal with the super creep wave, and the death timers are punishing, and Snake going for it. I think SOFM is going to try to uh, splinter cell away that inhibitor, uh, but this is not Imp's fault here. Like, yes, he's in the front line, but he's got multiple people around him. Why did Funny not tank for him? Yeah, but he did also go very far forward. I think that last step at the end spelled his doom. Uh, I could see what LGD were going for here, um, but as soon as those first two kills went down on SOFM joined the fight, it was pretty much curtains. And this is kind of the, uh, it really illustrates the difference between LGD and Snake that LGD have the one thing that Snake need, which is like decisiveness. Even if it's the wrong call, as long as you're decisive in making it, something happens. LGD or Snake just kind of passively watch the map lose. And that's what gets them into trouble like what we saw in game number one. So like, again, LGD, they've got the Baron Creeps behind him. Nine times out of ten teams are gonna be like, you know, we broke the inhibitor. We did our job with the Baron. Let's just reset the map. We'll set up for the next one and we'll continue to siege. LGD like, nah, let's end the game right here. This is just so LPL. Like, we came in today and it was just like, you know, honestly don't know which team's gonna win. It just depends, like, what the substitutions do for Snake, how LGD are going to adapt and come back in, you know? It's like, what LGD are we gonna see? And it's just so back and forth to the point where it's just like, yeah, classic, classic LPL. Have to hit you with humble brag. I did say that RNG and LGD yeah, would win today. Yeah, I know. But <laughs> to be fair, that first series could have gone either way. Like, this game, even Snake, like, We've had so many situations where they could have snowballed with this one. Maybe this one less than the last series. All but I'm saying. Yes, for us, you called it. Is I'm really good at flipping coins. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a skill, you know, in your own right. But maybe in this case, it was a double-headed coin because LGZ, in the end, I feel like it's it's going up against a crippled snake. You know, coming out of like the problems that they had last week um, and then trying. Uh, the roster rotation in in the first game. So it's not a snake performing it's like all. Um, all those systems firing at the same time. I kind of feel like at this point it's almost a Hydra, that it's just got too many heads and they're going in too many different directions, you know, trying to fight over the same resources. Uh, and Snake just kind of almost need to go back to basics and just figure out the iteration of the roster that works for them. This one's been a bit more stable, but when you look at game one, that really should have been their victory. Uh, for sure. But Snake, the dragon is up. This is a redeeming chance for the Snake to come back into this, and they have the priority over this, as well as the Vision. Starting it is a bit interesting, but Imp is already at the bite. He actually decides to recall for his last item. And that's an issue because this uh, Elder Drake is burning quite quickly. Imp still probably about 15 seconds out. Yeah, he's uh, he's doing the, the quick 100 meter. Okay. Blind Drake, looking someone to flip. It's They're just trying Amy, to buy but time for the burn. Sideways. And SOFM's low, is this mic gonna go to? It is an SOFM secure. Funny and Amy still on those front lines, they're not dropping any time fast, but the back line's unable to get the damage down onto Flandre, and that's gonna be dropping Amy to start this one off. SOFM in the back lines, he's found Funny, but he wants out. Hextech Ultimation, where is he gone? He's back in, he's trying to get out of the round one, but he's popped right back in there. Godfrey caught out in the back lines, he was separated from the pack. Flandre still running down him, but look at the kiting! He takes down one, he's still counting Flandre! He's still alive somehow, but he's finally gonna go down as Tank comes back up. And all in all, that was a four for zero with Funny on low health and everyone else be running down the mid lane. And yes, Imp was kiting beautifully, but he was late to the Elder Dragon fight. Jin Mint opening up his ultimate, just buying time for Snake to well, though, Because Amy is on his way, he is very close, but he's being blocked off by just Flandre by himself. He's crawling towards this pit. He They're needs this steel to work. Tidal Wave comes out. Who's gonna get the spine? S2FM comes up big, but now S 
Uh, Snake are caught in this pit. Ultimate comes down. Massive scatter to the weak in from Godfrey. And that's all of Snake disintegrating while Ertua Tem and Mint are the only members surviving. That is the one, the one play you can't make, Snake. Ah! Okay, so here's the thing. Either you lose the Baron. If the LGD get the Baron, they stall out long enough that any push that you would have had doesn't, ma uh, doesn't matter anymore. Or... They take the fight like that and they just smash and you lose any tempo advantage you have. Like, you have the super creep wave in mid lane. Just use it. There's no reason to rush immediately to the Baron and try to take a 50-50 smite. Yes, SOFM ends up getting it, but you're still taking a 50-50 when you don't have to. At the very least, that smite may just keep this uh, game alive for them, but at the, it will be that top lane tower. It will be the in him. Another 20 seconds on tank. 15 on Flandre and Mo's going to respawn. I think LGD are going to keep on pushing, to be honest. They took that incredibly quickly. They have five members hammering down. And look how fast these towers are dying. SOFM's in the back line. They try to blow him in. He's onto the spawn pad. LGD onto this next uh, Nexus tower. Tank has respawned. This could be a good fight by Snake. But it's just the Nexus that needs to be focused down. Imps on top of it. They need to take out these players. It's not going to happen. LGD finish off the game. And 2-0. And you can see the smiles on their face. And it's like, just another day in the office. Just got Caitlyn again. And they succeed where Snake failed. They did throw, looked a little bit shaky there for a couple of, you know, three individual decisions and plays. But ultimately, they remained clutch. Two of those mistakes were definitely imps. But at the same time, he had so many positive traits that we can definitely say it was a net positive. What a monster in that ADC role. And a massive smile on his face because he knows he really turned up big for that team. Exceptionally well played by LG.